Welcome back to Good Day Columbia. Everyone, the votes are in, well, kind of. With Election Day behind us, it now falls to thousands of vote counters to make sure every vote counts and hopefully the way it was intended. But with election fraud accusations flying even months before the first ballots were cast, will news of election machine malfunction and mishaps put a dent into the results? Our tech expert, Stephen Miano, with All Things Technology, joining us now, owner of DAC Computer Store in Irmo, South Carolina. Steve Miano. Good morning. Thank you for being here this morning. Okay, Miano, there's been talk about the Pennsylvania Romney machine. Yes, this is, uh, and actually the guy uh, put it on YouTube, which is illegal in many states. Right, it's to record while yeah. you're in the ballot. Yeah, case, so yeah. like a lot of people, Facebook, Instagram, they're in a lot of trouble. Probably not. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he, he was trying to cast his vote uh, for, I believe, Obama, but it kept choosing Romney and he said he went into troubleshooting mode and, and tried to figure it out. I think he was maybe casting some accusations there, but we had the exact same thing or the opposite thing happen, uh, vote flipping in North Carolina on a whole bunch of other states. Right, when uh, they where, voted for Mitt and it was going to President Obama, yeah, right. Yeah, uh -huh. so um, I, I think that the issue here is probably more a device malfunction, a calibration issue, mm -hmm. and not some nefarious plan to rig the election by forcing people to click on one button over another. Speaking about that, some people really do believe that it's rigged. Like there's yeah. some people that are rigging it for, you know, we want President Obama to win or we want Governor Romney to yeah. win. Um, talk about the whole calibration issue. You know, some people hear that. What is that all about? Well, you know, elections have been mm -hmm. rigged off and on since the 1800s. It's, I mean, it's a part of our national history. But mm -hmm. the calibration issue with these machines, they're touchscreens, and they use what is called a resistive touchscreen. And if you have a junky old phone with a touchscreen, you remember, you know, you press it and there's a little film that kind of gets yeah, invented. Yeah. Everybody hates those. Well, most of these machines are like seven, eight, nine years old. And if they're not calibrated correctly, you press a spot on the screen, mm -hmm. but the machine sees another spot. Yeah. And it's almost like with my um, cell phone, you know, you have uh, on the touch screen where sometimes you're pressing one button and it stalls or it takes a long time to go yep, to something that's else. Another issue. Okay. Yeah. Well, complaints of long lines and other issues are often blamed on um, electronic voting mm -hmm. machines, but uh, and why is that? Well, these machines are old. Uh, mm -hmm. The lifespan of the average voting machine is at maximum 10 years. And a lot of these machines are nearing or tipping that age. I know um, in a lot of Richland County and Lexington County polling stations, you had 10 machines, but only three were functional because they, just, yeah. they were going out, they were crashing, they were hanging. Uh, and I mean, nationwide, that's an issue. So I think nationally, we're gonna have to start replacing these, uh, these machines with newer, better, faster, stronger versions. And how about this, Steven Miano, since you're all things technology, why not just vote online? It's super easy <laughs> to fake an email. Actually, mm -hmm. um, the government has tried this with, with soldiers abroad a couple of times. Okay. The Serve Initiative was one of the big ones. And in each attempt, it was shown to be pathetically easy, um, in part because of the technology, in part because of the, the security and the education of the people running the program wasn't as high as it needed. Wow, okay, Sumiano, thank you so much for that.